Today we're going to take a look at the sine and cosine of complements. So in our diagram of triangle ABC, remember the capital letters represent the angles where the lowercase letters are the lengths of the sides. Our two complementary angles in this triangle are going to be A and B, which are also the acute angles. So remember, the measures of complementary angles, so the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is 90 degrees. The next blank is from uh, a previous note page as well, the day two, we made note that the sine of an acute angle has the same value as the cosine of its complement, or the other acute angle in the right triangle. So in this case, um, the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B, and let's just demonstrate that below it. So the sine of A, remember, the sine, cosine, and tangent are trig ratios, are ratios that compare the lengths of the sides based on the size of the angle. So the sine of A is, uh, let's write at the top, our SOHCAHTOA. So opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite angle A is A over hypotenuse C. Now cosine of B is also going to be comparing it to uh, the hypotenuse C, and it being the like adjacent and adjacent to angle B is also angle A. It says to use the table of our trig ratios, uh, define the sine of 42. <coughs> Excuse me. But rather than using the trig ratios, let's go to the calculator. So I'm going to change that. The sine of 42, and we want the cosine of 17. And let's round it as the table would and take it out four decimal places. So the sine of 42 degrees is 0 0.6691, and the cosine of 17 is 0 0.9563. Now, th that ratio should be equal to the cosine of the complement of 42. So to find the complement of 42, or, yeah, the complement of 42, we're going to subtract 42 from 90, and that is equal to the cosine of 48 degrees. So we go to the calculator, and we type in the cosine of 48. We do see that it's equal to the sine of 42, which is 0.6691. So the sine of 17 is going to be equal to the cos or the cosine of 17. I've got to read my note page. Is equal to the sine of the complement. And the complement of 17, we take 90 minus 17, and we get 73 degrees. So now when I take the sine of 73 degrees, we get the 0.9563. Okay, so let's see how we can apply that to examples one through four. So in the first one it says we have right triangle ABC, so let's draw a picture. Measure angle C is the 90 degree angle, so let's put A here, B here. And it says the cosine of A is 0 0.8892, so the cosine of A, find the sine of B. Since they are complementary, we know that the cosine of A equals the sine of B. So the sine of B is going to be equal to 0 0.8829. The example to the right, we have right triangle ABC. So let's again draw it, right angle at C. We'll put A up here, B here, and the sine of A, so here's angle A, opposite is sine to hypotenuse, find the cosine of B. Well, here's B, adjacent to B is also 8 over, um, and then over hypotenuse, 17. 
So cosine of b is always going to be the same as the sine of a. So if you want, we can put that on there. The sine of a equals the cosine of b. The last two. If the sine of 30 is equal to the cosine of x, find the value of x. Whenever you have the sine of an angle equal to the cosine of another angle, the two angles are complementary. So we know that 30 plus x is equal to 90 degrees. Subtract the 30 and x equals 60. On the right side, to finish this page, find the value of theta that makes the statement true. And it's saying that the cosine of theta is equal to the sine of theta plus 20. Again, if the sine of any angle is equal to the cosine, those angles, that's only true when the angles are complementary. So we take theta and add it to theta plus 20 and set it equal to 90. So I'm going to subtract the 21st and theta plus theta is 2 theta equals 70. Now divide 70 by 2, and theta equals 35 degrees. Now the fun stuff, or where we really use the trigonometry. So the first uh, day two was just to get you used to the ratios and giving you examples to memorize the ratios. Now we're going to use these ratios to find a missing side. Okay, so we do use Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side, but now we can also use trig. So in order to do so, you must be given the measure of one of your acute angles and the measure of a side. Okay, because if you think of the ratio, again, it's always we need an angle. If we look down below on the table, and two sides. Angle, two sides, angle, two sides. So in order to use trig, we need an angle and two sides. Once we um, have that, then um, that will allow us to find the length of the other side. So the steps, let's mo uh, model the steps in um, example six. So let's go to example six first. Find the value of x to the nearest tenth. So we have an angle of 42 and the two sides. Now I realize you can find this missing acute angle, but I would just encourage you to use the information that's given so that you don't end up with a computational error that's going to get you the wrong answer. So using what's given to us. First step was to identify the placements of the sides with respect to your angle. So according to the 42 degree angle, we have the side opposite and hypotenuse. So that's going to tell us which trig ratio to use. So the O and the H is the so or sine. So then we're going to use the sine. So step three, substitute the given values into each trigonometric equation. So it's the sine of the angle. I replace the angle with 42. The length of the side opposite is the X divided by the length of the hypotenuse, which is 12. Now to solve this equation for x, the opposite of dividing x by 12 would be multiplying to get rid of it. So multiply this side by 12, and let's go to the calculator, and we can type in 12 times the sine of 42. And that's going to give us that decimal, which we're rounding to the nearest tenth, which would be 8.0. So let's write down the whole decimal, 8.029567276. And I would encourage you to do so on the regents as well, just in case you make a rounding error. So 8.0 is approximately the length of x. And let's actually do 7 before we do 5. So maybe I should change the order. So a ship is sailing towards a small island. So here's our ship, even though it's not given to us. It's sailing towards the island over here, which is um, 800 miles away. The ship is 2 degrees off course, so it starts actually heading in that direction. 
Uh, by how many miles is it going to miss the island? So this is the distance we're trying to find here, the x. So according to this angle, again, you identify the sides based on the angle, which is right here. According to this two degree angle, we do not have the hypotenuse at all if I get rid of all my markings. We only have the two legs of the triangle, and according to the angle, that's the side opposite and adjacent. So that's going to be the tangent. So tangent. Again, the ratio tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. We're going to replace theta with our two degrees. The side opposite is x, and the 800 is the length of the hypotenuse. So let's multiply both sides by 800. Go to the calculator, 800 tan of 2 degrees. And we're going to round here to the nearest hundredth of a mile. So this is 9, 3, 6, so that 6 is going to bump the 3 to a 4. So let's write out the whole decimal, 27.9366155.9 to the nearest hundredth. Um, that's approximately 27.94 miles. So you don't have to write your answer in a complete sentence, but you do have to include the appropriate units. So last one on this page, solve for x. Um, so the two that we just did in 6 and 7, the x was in the numerator of both of those fractions on the right side. So to solve for x in this trigonometric equation where the x is in the denominator, we simply put this over 1 and cross multiply. Or you can look at it as to get the x out of the denominator, we have to multiply by x. And we'll have x cosine of 35 degrees equals 12. And again, that's a product, so we'll have to divide by the cosine of 35 degrees. Oops, I didn't, I mean to write the cosine of 35. That cancels, and x equals. Now, when you do these, you can do it in two separate steps, or just use the alpha y equals to get your fraction. And we're going to do 12 in the numerator divided by the cosine of 35 in the denominator. But we want it to the nearest whole number, so go to math, go down to decimal. And it's 14.6492905.07. So let's write that down and then we'll round. So 14.6492905.07 to the nearest whole number. So for x, x is approximately 15. All right. So our last example. And last recording for me <laughs> for the day. Find the length of BC and CD to the nearest tenth. And you have a whole page, but I'm going to try to fit this in uh, in this space provided so that I don't have to move my screen. So I'm going to get rid of the directions. So where do we start? We want to find the length of BC, so I'm going to highlight that in green. And I want to find the length of, I'll highlight an orange CD. Okay, well, the green is a part of the larger triangle. So we have two right triangles here. We have this green one. And feel, uh, feel free to pull them apart if you want. So I don't, I'll do that. So this is A, C, B. And we know this whole angle in this larger triangle, it says is 50. And this is 28. In the orange triangle, be this one right here. This is the B. This is the D, the A. This is still 28. Uh, it says that this is 32 degrees. And I'm trying to find, well, let's call this um, 
So let's, again, we'll call this whole length of CBX, and then this length of CD, whoops, I mean DB, Z, oh, we needed to find CD, which is this segment in pink. So I'm going to call that Y. Well, we can find X and Z for sure, okay, using the two triangles, the orange one and the green one. And then to find Y, so let's put the, the Z would be here, and this is X. Well, in order to find Y, we just simply take the whole length X and subtract Z. So I'm going to grab a green pen, and I'm going to find X in this triangle right here that's green. So according to the angle, I have the side opposite and adjacent, which is tangent. So I'm going to do that up here. Again, I'll use the green. So tangent of 50 degrees equals opposite of x over adjacent 28. So multiply by 28 to cancel the 28. And on the graphing calculator, 28 tan of 50. Is that decimal? And since that was the length of BC, I am going to round there. So X equals 33.36910059. Rounding to the nearest tenth, BC is approximately 33.4 feet. Now in the orange, I need to find the pink. The pink is the other side. I need CD, but I need to find Z in order to get Y, which is the length of CD. So according to this angle, we have the side uh, opposite and adjacent, which again is tangent. So the tangent of 32 degrees equals opposite Z over adjacent 28. So let's multiply by 28. Calculator 28 tan of 32 uh, is 17. Not X, but Z. So 17.4963 Now to find Y, we need to subtract these two values. So using the calculator, I'm not going to round, okay? So y equals, I'm just going to write again, x minus z. So on the calculator, I want to go up and grab that exact answer and then subtract, go up and grab the exact answer for the 28 tan of 32. And we get a final answer of 15 point eight seven two seven five eight seven four and we're going to round here to the nearest tenth so this uh, y remember was the length of cd so cd is approximately fifteen point nine feet Okay, so that is the end of the day three notes. And sorry I had a couple uh, mistakes uh, in this video. I recorded the first three videos all in one day after school. Uh, so I'm pretty tired, and this is where I'm going to stop here today, and I'll record the others tomorrow. Okay.